And hey, you never know, maybe one of these days I'll get around to doing a video on the Lost Legacy. No guarantees though. Though, though, though. Well, this is a long overdue. All right, what's going on everybody? Yes, I know it has been, this is what in the world? It has been extremely long time since I've done a video like this, but I've had a sudden inspiration to come back and at least attempt another video like this. I know that like 95% of my subscribers came from my Uncharted video last year. I was like, so I figured I'd at least give this kind of video another try. And what better game to do it on than The Lost Legacy? Play this game kind of like I hinted at in the original video and do like a review, summary, or synopsis, whatever you want to call it, I don't know. And uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll see how this video does. But I'm gonna try to keep this intro short. I've been talking for like four minutes now. My pacing still needs work. But yeah, hopefully you all enjoy me returning to this game and hopefully you enjoy the video. You all have a blessed day and I'll see you at the end. Real quick though, I do just want to say I think it is absolutely bonkers that I had to pay for PS Plus Extra to play this game. Holy shit. Break for commercial. No, no, no. Keep no, no, me no. on the air. No, no, no. Don't cut me off. What? Don't cut me off. When? People need it. This is my show. People need to hear this. What kind of day and age are we living in now when video games are behind a subscription paywall? Living in the old times. You just buy a game. And that was it. Now you got to subscribe oh, to PlayStation Plus Premium. To stream a game? What? That was great! Wasn't that great? So, opening up, we find Chloe Fraser, a familiar face in the Uncharted series and the characters, in India, which is currently in the middle of an ongoing war, and Chloe is here trying to find clues to the location of an ancient artifact, the Tusk of Ganesh, an artifact that her father died trying to find, and a man named Asav is currently trying to get his hands on this at the same exact time, because it can change the course of the war. We'll find out more about that later. And she needs to get her hands on it first before it's too late. How so, you ask? Let me explain. So Chloe's in India, not here to get her life savings scammed by an up and coming hustler who probably couldn't scam her if her life depended on it because she got skills like this. How much? 800 rupees, please. Okay, okay for you, 550. 30 large or nothing. Well, it's, it's more cheese than we've got. Okay, then it's five large now. And we're in. We're in. Wow. She is persistent, though. But is scouting the area for soldiers to arrive so she can hitch a ride to meet at a rendezvous based on texts from a mysterious person who instructed her to go through a red door and meet on a roof. The war going on is kind of confusing because she doesn't have to sneak around with these guys who are taking out these folks, but we've got to dodge these fellas over here around the corner, even though these guys just let her through. But on the rooftop, she meets. Well, hey, what do you know? It's Nadine Ross. Good to see you again. It's been so long. So, yeah. Chloe hired Nadine to help her locate the tusk, you know, because she's like a mercenary or militia, someone that in, in that realm. And I gotta say, the combat in this game is just as fun as I remember, especially considering these fancy kicks and whatnot. Minus the fact that I'm fighting for my life running because I don't remember how to dodge. Here, Chloe and Nadine sneak their way through the city, which makes me feel like I'm gonna find the secret room to the Thunder Gun if I look in the right place. <laughs> It wasn't there. And locate the Pink Lotus, which is a room with a whole lot of artifacts. But as far as I saw, no Easter eggs. Yeah, I know, sucks. But it does have one artifact though, which can point them in the right direction for the tusk. It's time to go. Now lie on the bed and close your eyes. What? So this is a soft and this is his office, and this is his uh, thingamajig. The disc. Oh yeah, the, oh yeah, the disc, that's right. So they interact here. Some notable pieces from this interaction are Asaba informs us that Nadine is no longer with Shoreline, which is kind of surprising. You know, the, the militia group that she uh, tried to kill us with about five minutes ago. Asaba is now your <laughs> average rebel. I mistook you for just an average rebel. What do you mean by that? And apparently Chloe's got a ball. <laughs> What? You've got balls. What do you mean by that? He orders to have them killed, but they make a quick escape before anybody can do that. And they make a run for the river when Nadine has a boat ride waiting for them. And what a considerate man this guy is. He brought extra clothes for Chloe. Solid dude. Where did you get those from, though? And goodness gracious, is it just me, or did Nadine get like 500 grams of extra protein per day since the last time we saw her? Chloe here figures out this disc, and they figure out it is some sort of key, and they see that it displays a trident, a bow and arrow, and an axe, each the main weapon of figures from Indian culture, and Chloe speedruns the investigation and ties this directly with the battle where Ganesh lost his tusk 
and she thinks that finding the symbols will point to the tusk. Now we find ourselves in the Western Ghats, a mountain range in India where Chloe and Nadine set off to find the long lost tusk at ruins named Hoysala and conveniently find a truck waiting for them. And hey, this game is just as eye catching as I remember, and this truck is a perfect opportunity to just take in the sights and enjoy the peaceful atmosphere. <sighs> Let's just enjoy the serenity, shall we? <laughs> Extra! Maybe. Wait! I can't do extreme mudding? Oh, that's some bull. Okay. Oh, shoot! <laughs> I do want to note the appreciation that I have for the realism of this truck. I mean, you can literally see Chloe shipping gears with a stick and place her gun in the side. I mean, like, hey, bro, I don't even know if that was in the base game, but... I'm really just noticing it, and it's pretty cool. Anyway, this section of the game is pretty straightforward. Find the ruins in the mountains, complete the puzzles to unlock the waterfalls, which I guess releases the pressure in the main gate to unlock your way through to the city. I'm still trying to figure out how anybody managed to make this in ancient times. Rinse and repeat. Of course, they don't make it easy for you, though. I mean, you may have to drop shot some fools along the way, crotch shot some other noobs as well. And we do see the return of the Python. I mean, it's pretty cool. In one of the most unrealistic ways imaginable. Imagine climbing this wall, right? <laughs> and leaving your climbing gear. They've left their climbing gear. It's all good though, I'm just being silly. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. During this time, Chloe and Nadine do have some bonding time as they have plenty of time to talk. I mean, Lord have mercy, look at all this area to cover. And they learn a little bit more about each other and their motivations and their life stories. Not too in depth, but a cool and surprising amount for a couple of folks that I feel strongly are about to backstab each other at any given moment. I'm starting to wonder whether you're worth the 50%. I knew it. You were going to give me up. If there was anything on this scene about the backstory, I didn't hear it because the guy right outside my window was cutting grass. In sculptor's quarters, by the look of it. There wasn't. I did notice that Chloe kept mentioning her dad, and it comes up enough for it to raise eyebrows to who this mystery man is. And we did find out that Chloe got moved to Australia because of her dad, and sometime later, he sent her this piece, I guess to encourage Chloe to finish what he started. Family business. Mm. Lot you should know. Heard you and those Drake brothers are close. <laughs> Closer than you'd think, Nadine. <laughs> Closer than you'd think. Conversation for another time. Oh yeah, I know I said this section is pretty straightforward. And yeah, it is based on the objective. But what the hell is this? Dude, I'm not even joking. Who, who in the world designed this stuff, man? Like, this, this don't make no sense at all. I want to know if anything like this exists for real. Because it is just insane to picture a group of people literally taking time out of their lives. I like to design these puzzles. And no matter of fact, no, 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 this this ain't a puzzle. <laughs> this is a trick. Probably good nobody stumbled across this freaking insanity. This don't make no fucking sense. Some bumps are bruises later. You make it through the big wall. I, I'm not even gonna ask how anybody managed to figure out how to build this one. And here, you find yourself in downtown Halibadoo. <laughs> what she said. And this is supposedly the last known resting place of the Tusk of Ganesh, which matches the district they have, and they see a way in through one of the crowns of the ancient statues. And I just want to say, I've been recording for like two and a half hours at this point, and we are flying through these chapters. I mean, like, I've been getting like so much nostalgia in this game, and I feel like I'm already at the end. It's gone by so fast. That's why they need to just hit us with Uncharted 5, cut all the crap, and we just keep this rolling. But now, we make our way to the big and very distracting statues, spend some time traversing, you know, the usual stuff. Oh, 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 Thank you. I want to swing like I'm to You know, one might wonder, what is inside such a statue after all this time? What the fuck? What the fuck is this shit? And here, you discover that Ganesh's tusk got chopped off by the very axe that his father gifted Parashwama? Parashwama? Yeah. Which I believe is his own son. Don't ask me why. The one that Shiva, Ganesh's father, gave to Parashwama? It's messed up. That's family. But you gotta solve this puzzle, lining up the shadows of the pieces to recreate the scene on the wall, leading you to a secret room where the disc can fit perfectly into this slot. Gotcha. And with how intricate these puzzles are, I feel like the next thing we're gonna see at the end of this is just a giant alien spaceship that's been there here the whole time. But guess what? Check this out. They deduce that this whole thing, all of this that we went through, is all a front. This whole city is a front to the actual city. We've seen some interesting puzzles in our time, but I've never seen someone design an entire city just to throw you off. And the structure starts to fall apart. You make your way out. These guys don't hear any of it for some reason. We get some badass chase scenes running from an insurgent or something again. I became a casual treasure hunter and stumble upon a prison that has the easiest escape route I've ever seen in my life. And we find a way out through the- <laughs> 
Once again, we leave it up to the villains to let the main characters do all the work and shortcut it when they find what you're looking for and take all the credit. Yeah, not that fun when it happens to you, huh, Nadine? And bro, I'ma let this fight scene speak for itself. Goodbye, thief. Proud of yourself? A little. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna jump in here real quick. Oh, they got fuck. But well, you know something cool did come up this. We see Sam! I find this funny actually because this takes place after the events of Uncharted 4's base game. And Sam just went on ahead and said, forget all that thieves and nonsense. I'm trying to get this paper, you know what I mean? And he is actually teaming up with Chloe on this one to try to throw off a sob on the hunt for the tusk. Nadine does not like that. But thankfully, this turns out to just be a cordial conversation and they talk it out in a calm manner. Holy shit, shit, shit. Don't hold back or anything. After running with the sobs mercs, we find ourselves in the back door of the real hidden city. That's not an exaggeration. We didn't find the entrance. We found the back door. And I want you guys real quick to tell me how we find ourselves here in the bowels of the hidden city. And then literally in the span of five minutes, we are here. Leave a comment down below as to what your guess is, and I'll tell you if you got it right. Nobody says or does that. Yeah, we just found the poor guy under some rubble from the explosions. And we get him back to his family. In the process, Nadine and Chloe make up and are on good terms again, which is nice. And Chloe explains about her father more, and she states that he was with the Ministry of Culture, and they financed an expedition for him, which was for the Tusk, I would imagine. But he was killed by raiders, and that gold piece is all that she has from him. We take some pictures with elephants. Did I mention this whole time that you were able to take pictures? It is pretty fun, engaging, and helps immerse yourself. Helps the time pass. They introduced that hours ago. So let me show you all the pictures that I've taken. <laughs> Swiped a little too far there. Hey, we actually found the lost city. I hope this is for real. And we find that her dad was actually here. This further motivates them to prevent Asav from getting a hold of the tusk. Also, I became the defender for one to myself. Because I got stacked up. And then we find the hidden statue. Oh, well, you know what? I, I guess it's not that hidden. <laughs> Another statue and perfect view for Google Maps. Cranks and slippery slopes. Slippery. Nadine is more patriotic than I once thought. Ambush reunion. Hey, you made it. Dude. It's all right. He is like a girl. Don't want to keep it down. Ah! I gotta say, this scene was pretty cool. It was awesome seeing Sam and Nadine reunite after what happened in the base game, especially alongside Chloe. And shortly after, we entered the dungeon. What? And apparently, Chloe's got balls. So, in a nutshell, Asav says, risk your life doing this puzzle, or... They're gonna chop your balls off. What? Holy shit, she's got balls, huh? I don't understand. It's an idiot. And holy smokes, they actually got their hands on the tusk. And of course, I'm rooting for the good guys. But once again, in classic villain fashion, Avsov leaves them for dead. And if you've seen any movie ever, that is a cue for them to just give them enough time to escape and come back and bite them in the ass. They escaped drowning, and we see Asav had the right idea with using a helicopter. You know, he probably looked on Google Maps and said, why we gotta go through all this? And the trio set off to go get this criminal some bitch. So Chloe, Nadine, and Sam make their way to the nearby train yard where Asaw flew off to and discover that he traded the tusk to this guy, Walker, Nadine's former lieutenant, in exchange for a bomb to blow up the city. Dude. Literally, why? That is how they plan on changing the course of the war with the Tuz. They want to blow up the city to start a civil war. They break through their defenses and catch this helicopter with an awesome Rambo-style fight. And I was also picturing this fight from MKX the entire time as well. And they take him down. And this scene actually brought a really good feeling to me to see Sam save Nadine. And to see Nadine and Chloe care for each other. And to see the trio help each other stop the bomb together. Wow, awesome stuff. And they chase down Asav in an awesome train sequence. Chloe and Nadine gotta think of something quick, considering- The bridge is out! The bridge is out, Oh god, this one's welded shut too. There must be another way. Oh, if you've got any ideas, I'm all in. I got a few. Yeah! They confront Asav in what is probably one of the coolest fight scenes I've ever seen in the game. I mean, this whole fight scene, and this whole sequence, matter of fact, looked like a choreographed movie fight, but I was playing it. I'm really going to enjoy this. 
Come, show me how it's done. Practice is off. Come here. They crash the train into the water and they never speak of it, I guess, but they do get excited thinking about the nice bit of cheddar cheese that they could receive from the Ministry of Culture from bringing the tusk to them. And surprisingly, Nadine is considering working together with them professionally as treasure hunters. Not you. Okay. And that was The Lost Legacy. Like I said, I know that this video was long overdue. I, and I, I know that a lot of my subscribers on this channel came from my Uncharted video last year. But uh, if there's anybody that's still even interested, hopefully you all enjoyed me coming back to this game. It was very special and like nostalgic for me to do so. I, cause you know, I just, it brings me back to when I was playing the fir the fourth one. It, it was just as fun as I remembered it. The storytelling was extremely awesome. And I appreciate how much effort these studios put into making a video game. You know what I mean? But yeah, we'll see how this video does. Uh, for everybody who watched, thank you all for watching. You all have a blessed day. Peace. I got it. Private collector. Huh? Just don't ruin the moment.